Good. Yeah. Good to have you. It's great yeah. to be here, guys. Yeah, great to be invited. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. We've been trying to catch up for quite some time. We always kind of get stuck into having good conversations. I haven't managed to get to speak to you too much, but Ben, I've been able to speak to you for a bit. Yeah, we've, we've had some good conversations. Yeah, and, and I've had to go. Um, Judy calls, pregnant pregnant wife and uh that's you're a busy man number one priority but yeah. uh we thought we'd have you on the show as our guest yeah it's lovely to be here lovely to be here lovely to have you here you guys have lots to talk about because you're very interesting people and you're very passionate people and you're a duo and you're a couple yeah so we can just take this in so many different directions um i'm gonna put it over to richard and get him to sort of start peeling the layers of the onion first let's sort mm-hmm. of so many things to talk about. I think one of the most important is how did you guys meet where you're from and how did Echo Storms become what it is today? Right. I'm going to start off on this one. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Go for it. Are you sure? 100%. <laughs> By the way, guys, just for anyone listening, Echo Storms have figured out a bit of a 50-50 sharing ratio. Is that right? It's it's kind of like a new thing. <laughs> yeah, so, so I just, this is going to be your first time. This is kind of like a, a, a beta test, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> Right. But, um, so I was, I was uh, working on a, a different musical project um, in 2019, um, and there was a girl who was who was working with us on on this, um, and she said, "I've got this friend who's an amazing musician, an amazing DJ. Um, you should meet her." I was like, "Yeah, sure. That's that sounds great." Um, so she hooked us up. She connected us. Um, and we started talking and it was kind of like we'd known each other forever, wasn't it? It was that kind of... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, so happened that uh, we got to know each other just before the pandemic started. Yeah. So... Um, it was 2019, wasn't it? Yeah, in 2019, uh, we met uh, over in Europe, then went to Russia, as I'm Russian and from Russia. Right. We stayed there for a month and then I just wanted to visit the UK for a few months or for a few weeks. And it so happened that we got... Uh, to spend uh, the whole you of know, the lockdown, whole of the lockdown there. So we've been locked down in the UK, and that's actually how our project as Echo Storm started. Uh, so yeah, that's literally what we did from <laughs> that's know, when from, that, from morning till evening is. Uh, that was when we really got stuck into it, wasn't it? Yeah, like we were sort yeah. of like inspiring ourselves for the first couple of months, um, but it was when we got locked up in um, or locked down. But it was basically like being locked up uh, <laughs> in the UK. Um, locked up in London. Um, we weren't even in London. We'd gone to visit my mum who lives in <laughs> who lives in the countryside. Oh, well, even better um, in the countryside. And I, it was even better. And I hadn't got to see my mum that much because I'd been very busy over in Europe for the last 10 years before that. Um, so I'd seen my mum like twice a year. Um, but, you know, we had a very close relationship Mm-hmm. Um, but we didn't see each other physically very much because I was incredibly busy and she was incredibly busy. Um, so it was actually nice to catch up with her um, for such a long period of time. We sort of made up for the 10-year absence of physical contact um, in that four months. Oh, it was hilarious, wasn't it? Oh, it was so funny. It was so, it was so, many, so many funny things happened. Um, just, Let's talk I, about oh, share one oh, if you can. Oh, it was just <laughs> so funny. Um I got, to we, le- I got to learn how to load the washing machine. And the dishwasher. And the dishwasher. We arrived and she's like, right, Katya, <laughs> this, if you're going to be staying here for a while, you need to know how to, learn the, uh, to load the dishwasher. You know, you've got to put, you've got to put the plates in first. But you've got to clean them first. You've got to wash them first. Give them a rinse. Give yeah. them completely yeah. rinsed. Yeah. Got to put them in like that. <laughs> See Katya just standing there like, where am I? <laughs> Be, uh, oh, it was so funny. It was, and then the time that I, <laughs> we've got my mum's got a friend um, called Donna, and her husband's called Robert. That's completely irrelevant information, but um, they're lovely people. And Robert's an incredibly helpful man. And um, when we realised that we were going to be stuck there, um, I always like to have a piano, um, like a, a proper like eighty eight note um, or seventy six weighted sort of thing for writing chord progressions. I hate writing, uh, like just drawing the notes in and stuff like that. It's just, I find it really not natural. Um, so I like to have, to be able to like jam around and come up with like some cool, interesting stuff on an actual key- keyboard. And um, yeah, I, I, we had some stuff which had come back from Europe and in there was um, an 88 note um, electric piano 
like with a wooden frame and everything like that. And I was like, okay, we can get this in. We can do this. Me and Robert, we can get this up the stairs. That's going to be no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we, we tried to carry... It's one the, of those kind of narrow stairways. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. Steep, Steep. Sto stone. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> basically, um, yeah, we nearly dropped the piano and um, I nearly got crushed. Um, by the by, the piano, but it was it was De funny. Death by piano. Death by piano. Yeah. <laughs> but we got it up there in the end. We got it up there in the end, and it was. Um, yeah, it, we set up our, our own studio right in the, his mother's house, and it was uh, great because yeah. that's the place I grew up. She hasn't moved. She still lives in the same place. Were you in your 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 you know the room that you grew up in, or were you in another you, room? Or we were we were in the we were sleeping in the room that I grew up in. Yeah. Um. um and then the room next door, um, which is like a guest bedroom, um, that became the studio. Amazing. So you put the bed on bed on the end. This is a great life hack for anybody who wants to set up a makeshift studio and you don't have any way of getting any um, acoustic treatment. Get the bed. Put up against the wall. Put it up against the wall. Mm. It works an absolute treat. Yeah. It's the Bali Villa. Studios, <laughs> studio vibe. It's the, it's the anywhere yeah. villa studio vibe, yeah. and it works so well. Yeah, it works so well. So yeah, we did that. Got the piano up with Robert. <laughs> Amazing. And, no, and it was it was good, and that's where we really sort of that's where we started. You know, figuring out who we were. Like we, the first couple of months, we were you know figuring out our compatibility as as human beings. Um, but then we had to figure out how we could blend, you know, our backgrounds and our tastes and our, you know, what we bring to the table together to make it into something. Have you have you guys already decided at this point that you were going to start a musical project? Yes, duo? yes, yeah. yeah that so was committed that, to that. That was already committed from the start, pretty mm -hmm. much. Have you been in a musical duo before? Uh, project. I have been in a musical duo project. Have before. you cut you? Yeah. Oh, I haven't been in a duo or any project. I have just been involved in the uh, music, music industry uh, over in Russia, over in St. Petersburg. So if talking about my background in music, I was uh, organizing uh, and involved in, you know, the musical and uh, general like design sort of thing of events. Yeah. So me and my sister were organizing uh, rave parties, like techno rave parties in St. Petersburg. Um, St. Petersburg in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if, it was actually not only like indoors, it was also outdoors, some festivals, all sorts of events. And it was just like really cool to be uh, there and overseeing everything with my sister, coming up with some creative ideas um, from the point of, from design point of view, as well as, uh, you know. But it was mainly techno style, yeah, wasn't it? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It was quite underground what she was doing before, yeah. um, which is why I think with my background, which is. Well, my background's in everything, to be fair. <laughs> I've been involved in... Background is in genre-wise. Uh, yeah, genre-wise. Yeah. I've been I've, I've been pretty much involved in every genre. Um, I started out more in sort of rock and pop and then went over into hip-hop. But I've been involved a lot in, you know, EDM and so stuff you, like that you, before, before, you know, the whole bubble burst. I was involved in a few EDM sort of projects and writing for, for EDM stuff. I think and, we've all got an EDM project under our belt. I think been in the game long enough. At least one. I yeah. think I think we all do. Yeah. Um, and at the time, it was cool. Mm. And you know, it just it just all got out of control, didn't it? Yeah. You know, it got oversaturated, and you know, now I literally the sound as well. Yeah, oversaturated. It was. Yeah. yeah. It was. The problem is there was only so far you could take it, mm -hmm. and it got taken to every possible place, and it didn't have any roads to go anymore. Yeah. That yeah. was the. So you guys are getting to know each other. You've moved the piano up. The wall uh, up with, the stairs with Robert. With Robert, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you've got the studio. You're starting to get. You know, we've got a bit of an understanding of your backgrounds. How was that coming about? Were you starting to jam with each other, uh, share music that you liked? Just yeah, tracks well, that that we were already doing. Yeah, that we've been doing since day one. Yeah. like we were always listening to music, and it wasn't just techno and house. It was all sorts of music. Like What's one of the tracks that you guys really just bonded over? Um, I think 
I think probably Me and You Together song by the um, 1975. We, we listen to 1975 a lot. And actually, I can't say that we listen to house music or tech house or you techno. Know, a techno at home for ourselves it's it's just uh, the, in, the you know the part of music industry involved in as it's what's what's it's current at the moment as it's what sort of music we make so yeah. we do um you know uh s- surround ourselves with uh, that kind of music while we're working but uh while we actually just like driving or I don't think listen. we I don't think we ever listen to tech no, no, house no. in the car. No. Yeah. Yeah, same. Listen to something for pleasure. You know, we love listening a bit of rock, a bit of indie pop, all sorts of genres just like some obscure stuff like some more like underground sort of like some random Yeah. but like more like lo-fi sort of stuff. Well, I um, actually enjoy a lot listen to bands uh um library of uh, songs he has done before which is mainly rock sort of stuff and uh, the songs he wrote for all sorts of bands and uh, uh, artists and uh, yeah it's it's just cool to be able to enjoy uh, songs which have some sense into them which actually carry a meaning absolutely and you can feel that in listening to it yeah for yeah. sure it's each song it's like its own little story yeah, love. but I, I that and that's been one of the most challenging things as a writer writing for Tech House. Oh yeah, because I like absolutely imperatively do not want to make records about shaking your booty on the dance floor, or you know, um, put your hands up, put your hands up. Um, let me see your hands. Guess yeah. get another drink. Yeah. Let's get you know whatever. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Like, there's no amount of money in the world that's going to make me write like that. It's, I'd rather you know I'd rather work as a bin man. Yeah. Um, you know, it just goes against everything. Um, let's go. Let's let's talk about for. what you stand for as a um, as a writer and well, as a what, producer. What I was saying was because it led on nicely from what Katya was just saying about the the meaning in the songs, mm-hmm. and it's for me it was incredibly easy to write songs um, with like a verse, bridge, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus um, structure, and put meaning in that. The really difficult thing is to write um, lyrics which last a maximum of 16 bars and repeat that have some sort of meaning in them. That is That has been the most challenging thing for me is writing stuff that um, to condense it into something which is um, suitable for Tech House but it still has a meaning behind it. And is there a reason why, because it sounds pretty obvious listening to your talk, does it have to be Tech House for starters? And if so, why why, why have you chosen Tech House? Um, um, if you have that kind of challenge to I, create the soul? A, I love a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Amen. B, um, obviously... You know, I come from a background where I've I've written for for major label artists. I've been on a major like I, bef- prior to Echo Storms, I was on a major label myself, and I wanted to do something that was going to be visible. Um, I wanted Echo Storms to have a style that would be visible, um, and I I feel like if we'd done a sort of a genre of music which was maybe less popular than Tech House, um, it would have been difficult to get the visibility. Right, that, so it's a, it's a strategic reason. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is um, 100% a, strate- yeah. a strategic reason. Yeah. And we always plan to start more on the ground and go right because it's the only way to go, really. You can't start pop and then go backwards. Door, backwards. Apart yeah. from Jonas Blue. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, sometimes you can, but we just decided to... <laughs> while, while we're be building up, we can, you know, uh, release uh, those... Uh, tech house records which we did create and uh, then move on to pop stuff which is more so but then you can always the beauty of that is you can always go back and release a club record yeah Mm. and then you can release a collab with Rita Ora for the radio and then you can go back and release another underground record you know I mean you can basically have two careers as as the same artist yeah one of that that's actually something that's come quite obvious to me now after speaking to my friend Carsten who heads up Salta label based in Bali he said a lot of the underground guys write pop records, but when yeah. they play their sets, they're playing 
or their underground tracks yeah. that they like to play when they can play when they can play the music they really enjoy playing. Or you play a VIP yeah. of one of your of one one of your pop tracks. Yeah, yeah. Like if a crowd, if it's a, been a big pop track, yeah, then the crowd is probably going to expect that. Yeah, and, and they deserve to hear that because that's what they're there for. Hundred percent. If yeah. you've had a big radio hit and you've got people who've come to see you for that hit, for that hit, and you don't play it, it makes you a little bit of a. Well, I, I don't want to say it, but yeah. You know what? I mean. You're going to disappoint your fans. You're going to disappoint your fans. Mm. You know, you 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 want to keep the fans happy because at mm. the end of the day. They give it all meaning. They, they give it all meaning. Mm. They give it all meaning, 100%. Um, so, you, but there's always a way to find, there's always a way to to work in, and it might not be in its original radio format, but you can work in the main elements of that hit, you know, into a VIP mix, which fits your, your slightly more left field set. Have, have you heard a tech house track that's achieved what you're trying to achieve when it comes to vocal structure and the arrangement uh, that have made, uh, have been able to get a bit more of a story across in the tech house format. Yeah. Yeah. But they're all ours. <laughs> so would you say that this is starting to, you guys are achieving your, this yeah, is how 100%. you're defining what Echo Storms is. hundred percent. hundred percent. Like every track we've written has had a meaning behind it. Um, like you just listen back to our tracks, you know, Delirious. That's yeah. Let's talk know. about that track. Tell us how the track came about, and um, we'll, we'll give it a plug in, in during the week when we're on the show. So. Um, well, that's that's an old record. Yeah. Um, but that if you go back, Delirious, you wish uh, all of those tracks. They're they're all about. They all tell little stories. You know, Delirious is about being very confused with where you're at. It's about being suffocated by the industry. Um, it's about feeling very disorientated in life. Um, Is this at the start of the pandemic? This was at the start of the pandemic. <laughs> um, that Delirious was written. Um, you know, You Wish is a, a true story about a stalker. Um, emotions. Emotions is probably, it's one of my favorite Echo Storms track. And it's, it's, it's about real friendship. It's about us. And it's about being there and supporting each other. Um, and it's it's a really important record for me. And like this morning, I actually loved that record so much that this morning when I was cleaning my teeth, I put it on. Wow! Like I've heard Emotions. it. On, I've I've heard it multiple times. Obviously, I produced it. <laughs> we we wrote it, you know. Um, and I know that record like the back of my hand, but I still had a desire to listen to it because I love that record so much, and it's very personal. Um, and then obviously in um, forward, we've sampled. Um, We've sampled Denzel Washington, um, but like that speech obviously has a huge amount of meaning, um, and that definitely um, when we when we uh, found that vocal with Admiro, who was our collaborator on that record, um, it was. Do you remember the moment when we found that? It was just like yeah. he, he is saying everything. Yeah, we, we were sitting over the Zoom and trying to record uh, our conversation and try to dig something out of it, but actually then we just realized that everything has already been said by someone uh, with such an amazing voice, voice as a as someone who was dictating like he was actually speaking to the public you know delivering his message with emotion How, however we were sitting just like over the zoom talking to this each was over zoom each, yeah it was, it was yeah, always yeah. The, the plan was just to clarify the plan was um we wanted to come up with a really good vocal so um for for this track that we want to do with our friends in America, Adam, Admiral. Mm -hmm. um, so my idea was that we would have multiple Zooms, we would record the Zooms, and I would edit the vocals. Um, actually, no, that's a lie. Probably you would edit the <laughs> vocals. <laughs> yeah. My part of the job. Because <laughs> generally when it comes to vocal editing, Katya was better than me. Um, but... Um, so that was the plan, and we were going to find, you know, a few bars of golden nuggets from two or three hours of conversation between us and Adam. Yeah, in in candid flow, exactly, right, without the intention of being recorded. Exactly, mm -hmm. that was that was the idea. Mm -hmm. And then we, in the last conversation, when we nearly had everything we needed, we just we started talking about um, amazing speeches, and he told me about this. Um, Denzel one. Denzel one, the one about falling forward. Um, and it was a speech which he'd given. Um, it wasn't in a movie. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it was a speech he'd given. I think it was to Harvard, wasn't it? Was it Harvard? Yeah, it was uh, it? It was a graduate. It was, it was a, it was a graduate, graduation speech. I, I think I'm 99.9% sure it was Harvard. Mm-hmm. And he, um, yeah, so we he just showed us this, this video. And we were like, wow, this is amazing. Let's just use this. This is everything we want to say in... Um, you know, in, you know, in what, so in, the byproduct of the Zoom calls is you guys got to have human being conversations, yeah, connect 100% in, yeah. in a time of disconnect, yeah, and a time of uncertainty, yeah, and a time of confusion, yeah, and not just confusion at a personal level, but as a society industry, yeah, on all levels, yeah, with lots of uh scary information and and that isolation which robs us of our human being. Yeah. Quality. It's the human yeah. connection. The connection, yeah. you know. And I think it also taught us to look a lot further for friends. Mm. Cause so realizing that we are actually way more connected because yeah, of the technology. Exactly. Exactly. Like we have friends all over the world, don't we? Like and we speak to on a on a regular basis. And the beauty of you know things like WhatsApp and Zoom, you know, mm. it's not before, like, go back, you know, 20 years when you wanted to make an international phone call, you had to take a second mortgage, didn't you? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but but now with stuff like WhatsApp and Zoom and even Instagram, you know, people all over the world, they can just connect with each other. It's a click of a button, it's literally. It's a click, click of a button and you can, you can find a friend, you know, someone you have a connection with, you know, across the, across the Pacific. You know? Sure. You know, connection and authenticity is something that we that we love. It's one of the, like the core pillars of what we build, yeah, everything yeah. that we do around. And with the music and the way you find inspiration with what you do, the authenticity from your process and how you pour things into what you create, it shows and it translates into your music. And that's why people love what you do. And they listen okay. to it. That's why you can listen to a song that you made donkeys years ago and it still hits you yeah, like, yeah. It's the, like it's the day it was created. Yeah, It's hard to... It's hard to know how to do that unless you start confronting yourself. Yeah. Right? Because you, you said something really early. And let's, let's, let's unpack this a bit more because I think this is very valuable to producers, aspiring producers and producers listening to this that we all go through these challenges. And one of the things that you both talking about is meaning, that soul, yeah, 100%. That, that emotional weight in a track that, okay, a, I'm getting a feeling. This is generating a feeling listening to this song and it's taking me somewhere. Um. You guys have figured out with Echo Storms, Tech House is your platform at the moment and like what I did there at the moment. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, kept it open. I like that. And, you know, you're working out how you can put both of you into that and that feeling. And this this is one thing that you like about Ben with his rock background because rock is, I just think it's so cool, right? Especially that guitar. You know, I, I play a little bit of bass. That was one of my things that came out of the pandemic, but a guitar, damn, you know, and piano, keys, yeah. another bad boy. Right, yeah. so you've got limited instruments that have other expansions of those expressions with pedal boards and effects, and 100%. start getting to synthesizers. Yeah, you know, so this is starting to get real. You guys are starting to sound really interesting about why Echo Storms, why why you guys do what you do, and and how you incorporate things that you're going through together, or things that you agree on. Yeah, in case in point, the Denzel sample. Yeah, you both connect to that. That's your common ground. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, how you guys f- try to create this process that you now sound like you've pretty comfortable in uh, that, you know, to because if we can encourage more people, because most people are looking at sort of Tech House as a, a leading genre to get their music across, you yeah. know. Um, we're starting to see a lot of Tech House structure go across into pop. Yeah, right? 100%. And Do it to it, case in point. <laughs> right. So... Um, now I think is a really good idea to share a, a bit more because I agree with you 100%. I think it's very limited. In, in fact, for me, if I'm going to write a Tech House track, I can't put meaning into it in, in that way. I try to create a feeling of what I want people to feel in a dancing point and limit my s- storytelling scope uh, to a soundbite. You know, I think I sampled, uh, I sampled Moody Man talking about uh, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. It's, yeah. It was a Red Bull, speaking to Red Bull Academy, yeah. and he's like, you know, it's really resonates with me. So I try to use music the same way you guys do. Yeah. Uh, as as a st- you know, music is a is a sacred artistic process. 
It really is. When you have that ability, you can influence people and that's sacred. It's like that's a special power and a gift and we can do negative or positive things with that. Yeah. And you guys seem like a bit of a, a powerhouse, right, with your talent and your skill sets. So how would you look at one of your ways of – how did you overcome, your, I guess, your first barrier with Tech House and songwriting? What was the first thing you guys needed to address to get that square peg going in the round hole? Yeah, a very important thing which we had to address is to create our own label. So we're not limited on the creative ground. So with our own label, we had the freedom of actually releasing what we want. Keeping your creative yeah, control. keeping the creative control, which was – Actually, a relief. Protecting your vision. Yes, it was a relief because to be, to having be. to suit certain label standards, certain label sounds would never make uh, us uh, uh, like as a band we, an identity. We would never create our own. We'd never be able yeah. to relate, release the records that we've, we've released. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't see any label releasing. Move on is a good example. Mm-hmm. And it's just gone to number four in the UK club charts. Congratulations. So, thank you. People, so people love the record. Um, but I just couldn't see any other label sign yet. You know, let's let's break that record down. It's it's got um, a rave a rave piano mm-hmm. in the break with break beats, and then it's got a massive build up, uh, loads of tension, and then it drops in a different key. It drops in the minor fifth. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even drop in the same key as the rest of the song. Mm-hmm. That's clever. It's it's mad. Um, I don't think any label would have signed it. Um, It got sent to a couple and they said, we love it. We have no clue what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, just put it out. People will like it. Trust me. And they were like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a scary record. It's very ravey. It's like a mix of lots of of different things. Which is you guys. Yeah, which Which is is us. Which is you guys. And to be fair, you know, we... On, we'd released on a few, you know, different labels prior to starting Galactica, which is our label. And we always found ourselves um, getting involved with label stuff, um, which you, n- uh, normally we you, the artists wouldn't get involved with. Um, so we were doing a lot of the promo, a lot of the legwork on the promo side. How do you feel about promo? As an artist, how do you guys? I it's, want I want you guys both answer this one at a time. Yeah, it's I think it's extremely important uh, if you want to satisfy uh, your desire for your record to be heard. It's very important to push uh, your own music because d- at, at least at the start, if you don't push your own music, if you don't not not active on socials, if you not there, you know, with SoundCloud promotion, with Spotify promotion, if you're not there shouting out about your own record to each single person you know and to your audience. Uh, on um, social platforms, then your record doesn't stand a chance. So if you invested so much energy, your talent, your time into creating this record, so it's kind of your duty to then, if you decided to release it, to promote it and to give record a chance. So that's my point of view on the How promotion. How do you feel about it though? Like when you have to promote your record and you're shouting it out to the crowd or do you, does that process come easily to you? Do you enjoy it? Um, actually, uh, once we started Galactica, it became so much easier, much more easier, before, much more be, natural. Before, when the label uh, would sign it and ex- then expect you to do self promo, um, how did would, you guys find it? Actually, um, sorry, darling, uh, in, we we released on uh, probably one of the most pleasant experience experiences we had was uh, our release of uh, Stereo Hype. Yeah, that was brilliant. They, James's label. Yeah, James and Cam. They are big up James and Cam. <laughs> Big up Stereo Hope. Yeah. L- lovely people. Amazing people. Yeah, and it was just it was just like a journey, you know. We got to uh, tap into their amazing, massive fan base, and it was just yeah, the it, hype fan were incredible. It was, aren't they? It was just very interesting process, and uh, we just went with the flow, and uh, everything happened naturally. So we were pushing the record together, and we achieved great results. Yeah, that was brilliant. And then we had released on a couple of other labels who were. Um, major labels um and well i'm not going to name them but mm-hmm. if anyone goes on our spotify they can they can see our discography so mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> doesn't yeah. take a genius um so we've made a decision <laughs> while we had the, how that- much time did you need the track let's let's talk about the one that was on hype stereo hype stereo hype how much when you were self promote when you guys were you guys promoting on that or did stereo hype do most stereo of it stereo hype did f- uh, probably 50% of it yeah um how would you guys promote it um, what was your 
effort or actions that you took when you're promoting that record? I reached out to loads and loads of curators. Mm-hmm. Um, On Spotify? And, yeah, or? and this was something which has served us so well. Um, and, and it took forever to do. Yeah. It took forever to track down the playlist, to track down who runs the playlist, and then to um, make contact which, with that person. Which, by and, the way, now probably serves you well yeah, in Galactica. For, for which serves us so well yeah. in Galactica. It took... It now, us, yeah, now when we release a single, we don't even need to send it out to these people. They're waiting for it. Mm-hmm. Like we did a remix, uh, which came out last week, I think. Was it last week? Yeah, I th- yeah, it was last week. Mm-hmm. It came out last week on our label and we didn't send it out to anyone. And it came out and song stats were just going crazy. Added to this place, added to that playlist, added to this place. It's all people who we'd built a connection with. Yeah, it's very important to build a relationship with the curators. people in the music You've industry. You've got to have a relationship mm-hmm. with the curators. Yeah, and people say, why are your Spotify numbers so good? You know, compared to other tech house artists. And it's because we took the time to... I mean, we, you, were, you really opened up my understanding of Spotify when we first met. How that's, you know... Festivals and stuff, they look at your Spotify. 100%. 100%. You know, that's the gauge. That's the gauge now. It's the beast that we must play with at it the is. moment. It is. For the time being anyway. It is. 100%. And it's, yeah. So you put in the work. Yeah. You've got you, the curated list. You just, you just built the relationships and you figure out who likes your music. Yeah. Who likes your sound. You know, because these people, you've got to remember, these people, these curators, they need songs to put on their playlists. Mm-hmm. Do you find the curators who have, who A, themselves like your sound and be whose audience like your sound you're away mm-hmm. you're and away would you give them to them exclusively before it? was there any kind of that or was that not possible no it's it's not really possible to give it exclusively to to one playlist um but it, it would be possible i guess but i've never been asked to do that mm-hmm. um I, i'm i'm not sure if i would mm-hmm. um to be fair because they've all there's you know there's about 25 30 different curators who've got, you know, really good playlists, who've all equally supported our music really, really well. And we're so, so grateful to these people for, you know, exposing us to to their their fan base. And it's taken us around the world. Like, it's literally taken us around the world without even having to leave our studio. You know, we've, we've got people, we've got fans in, you know, Brazil, in, you know, we, you know... Asia, in North America, all over Europe, like, and it's all thanks to these, you know, these curators who've, you know, built up this, this fan base and, you know, have, you know, we've been lucky enough to have our music on their playlist mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. people have gravitated towards it and then they followed us on the socials and people have even like, you know, they've sent us videos of, you know, them playing the songs um, as DJs, even just playing the songs in their car. Wow, um, yeah, I get that sometimes, and it's and it's it's amazing to have such a huge reach and to be able to reach so many people. It's just such a beautiful thing. What it's what's lovely. another thing that you guys did? That's a really high value exercise you took, which sounds like it was tedious. Took a long time. It did. Yeah, it put did. in the work. That's a really good example of hard work. The tracking down. It's almost like uh, investigative journalism. Yes, so yeah. to speak. Yes, research. What's another thing that you guys were doing to help? self-promote as an artist because these things are really important for people out there that probably don't don't know these techniques mm-hmm. uh, well, yeah for our releases on galactica we have um different ways of promoting one record so we obviously get you know dj promo uh, mm-hmm. team to to work it we have a really we we have okay so the, the different size okay the dj promo team that we have now are absolutely brilliant who are you guys using we're using Woe. Woe, okay. Um, we're using two teams, actually. We're using Woe for international A-list, mm-hmm. and then we're using Power for UK um, upfront uh, promotion. And Is this all done through in-flight? Uh, Power is not through in-flight. Okay. Power have their own system. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do seriously believe these two companies, in the, and they, they don't overlap at all. Mm-hmm. You know, they both do completely different things. Um and but they're both brilliant. Like Mark at Power is an absolute legend, and he was in Bridgerton. Right. He was. He's also an actor, and right. he was in Bridgerton. Wow. Yeah, he's a cool guy, is Mark. Cool, very, man. very, very cool guy. Shout out to Mark. Big shout out to Mark at Power, um, and to um, to Alistair and to Patrick at Woe, who've just they've completely smashed the last release. This remix we had come out um, last week. Um, it's been smashing the thousand and one 
uh, track list charts. We we've got up to number twenty one, um, wow. which awesome. is which is pretty cool considering that's every genre. Yeah. Like there's not yeah. just tech house. Yeah. It's it's the whole game. It's everything. Mm. Yeah. And it's so impressive. number four in UK at the moment. Number four in the UK. That's um, another so that, track. So that's that's move on. Yeah, move that's on. Move on. And then um, t- track lists. So you guys are really hitting it from different angles. You guys are, really are a bit of a powerhouse, not just in the self promo, but in the songwriting. Yeah, this well, is a really exciting time. Yeah. I, I think we're witnessing the pre the pre. Uh, we're excited. Yeah, we're, you guys are on the precipice of something. This turning into real something really big. We we always wanted it to turn into something well, big, think, and we were always working towards. That. I think and that's got that framework, you know. And now you've got the label, so you're in charge of your vision. Yeah, it's great, and you we've got a, we've got family. such a good team. And our manager Matt um, is also a whiz at radio. Mm-hmm. Um, he's so good with UK radio, um, and he's uh, we've had so much good radio, radio support um, on every Galactica release. Um, it's been on uh, Kiss FM in the UK, which I don't know if you know Kiss FM in the yeah, UK, but it's, but it's for dance music in the UK. It's yeah. it's it's the top one. Yeah, um, basically, like everywhere in life, it's just very important to surround yourself with the right with people. the right people. Hundred percent. And it's it, it took us a while, but I it think did. I think we are getting there. And now we kind of have the machine up and running, and we just like uh, steaming forward to increase our power and uh, just find new ways to, to promoting our music, n- new ways to connect with different people. Actually, that's why we are here with you today, mm-hmm. <laughs> because you have extremely interesting uh, NFT project and. Obviously, great, great. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to, to jump on anything new and anything exciting, anything which would, uh, you know, help us, music industry, and in general, open up new opportunities, new horizons, and uh, just it's always for us fascinating to be able to, um, you know, develop ourselves in further than just like our narrow circle of, you know. Music creating process, our, our existing circle. You mean <laughs> yeah, it, exactly. our, our circle isn't that narrow, darling? It's quite yeah. I'm talking about it's always much more than just sitting in the studio and creating records and then putting out there. It's a lot of it is about correct networking. Is about you know b- being hustled enough, being able to uh, be motivated be, enough. Be, be motivated mm. enough. Yeah, exactly. And uh, how do you guys find the motivation? Are there, are there, have there been times when you haven't been motivated? Oh, we're always we're always motivated because we always got bills. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, we've got bills to pay. Exactly. Best, best got bills to pay. <laughs> yeah. If we don't pay for our flat. We get kicked out, right? <laughs> yeah. And you said <laughs> true. And you said that uh, you said that you know surrounding yourselves with the right people. What to you? What does the right people mean? People who have the same objective as you do, and the same Not goal. Not even I wouldn't even say the same goal. For me, actually, it's uh, much more interesting to connect with people with a, who have different points of view, who have something completely different from me, who you know can open up a new uh, field for me which I haven't explored before. It actually helps you grow. You know, some people go to university, and some people. You know, take the time and they'll go traveling, they go working. University of life. Mm, <laughs> yeah, the university of life, uh, you know, the being able to, you know, communicate with different people from different countries, it gave me personally as a, as a human being, not only as a musician, as a human being, you know, so much education in life that I think, yeah, that's it is very important. It's probably the most important thing is networking and and how would you guys, like, do you guys find yourself comfortable networking when you want to, let's say you want to meet someone that you haven't met, that you know can could be quite, uh, could help you guys achieve what you're trying to achieve? How would you find, approach them? We just find where they live and we just follow them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So the, the song about the stalker, yeah. were you guys the stalker? <laughs> we were the stalkers, yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually about his ex. Um, yeah, okay. Let's, well, not, let's not talk we, about we, her. Yeah, we, we can, <laughs> let's, we, let's focus on yeah, the future because exactly. it looks amazing. It sounds amazing. Um, yeah, it is. It's exciting. It's really exciting. And so, Galactica. Yes. Yeah. What was the inspiration? Firstly, what was the inspiration behind Echo Storm's sick name? Uh, thank you. You just woke up, was it? Yeah. I tell you why. Because it was in lockdown and there was, it had been like thundering and lightning for like a week almost nonstop. It was like, always stormy, but we quite enjoyed that, didn't we? It was like, it was quite dramatic, wasn't it? Yeah. And the Echo? Um, I've been using Echo Boy plugin a lot. 
How good is Echo Boy? It's shout amazing. Sound Toys. Massive shout out to Sound Toys. I'd be lost without them. Crystallizer, uh, amazing plugin. Um, obviously, Alter Boy um, has yeah. been uh, very, very heavily there's, used. There's one more I use. There's Echo Boy. Uh, there's Ray, radiate. Crystallizer is good. Crystallizer is brilliant. On Decapitator. Pads. Decapitator. Decapitator yeah, yeah, that's uh, it. Radiator. Yeah. Um, Phase Mistress. Oh, yeah. they're all good, yeah. man. They're all good. They're brilliant. Yeah. Like, they're so good. They so sound. Good. I know it sounds stupid because it's obviously a digital plugin because it's on a computer, but they sound really analog, don't they? Mm. They sound really vintage and analog and warm. They really good. They've done it. such a good. Oh, they're brilliant. I, bundle. I love sound toys. Oh, Primal Tap. That's what's Primal yeah, Tap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love. I love sound toys. Oof. Oh, I get excited about sound toys. Yeah, it's good. So Echo is actually inspired by sound toys a yeah, little bit yeah, because that becomes an, uh, a key part of your sound design. Yeah. You know, so there's the storm. It is it is, it is the delay uh, which we use on everything. Everything. We so don't use another There's delay. a bit of insight producers. If you're trying to figure out how they get that delay, make sure you're on the right plugin. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys have any other go-to plugins that you like to use? Uh, yeah, we can run you through them now. Um, so you go to the bathroom for this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, so, um, plug-in wise, uh, delay, always Echo Boy. It's, or Echo Boy Junior, if you want to do something simple. Um, but Echo Boy, Echo Boy Junior. Uh, Reverb, Valhalla, just kills it every time. Um, Valhalla, mainly Vintage Verb is the one that we use, um, on most things. But Valhalla Room is very, very good as well. Use that on a lot of stuff. Um, then for processing... Uh, compression, limiting, um, that we use um, a lot of UAD plugins. So 1176, LA2A. Oh, they're the best, man. They're the best. They're, good quality. Oh, UAD. They are just, they're so good. I cannot describe how good they are. Um, they're lifesavers. I love them. I love them. Um, yeah, especially when we're traveling so much. Oh, uh, tracking vocals. Oh, for sure. Tracking vocals with an Apollo is just a game changer. We used to own a 1073, yeah, a physical Neve 1073, right, and a Tube Tech CL1B, and we were leaving on tour, and we said, "Well, we need to be able to carry on recording vocals." So we we A B'd um, the uh, Unison plugins uh, on the Apollo, yeah, re replicating them, yeah, um, and they are endorsed. They're endorsed by Neve. They're yeah. endorsed by all the manufacturers. Like they don't release the plugins unless they get. The endorsement from the, the quality money. control exactly. Yeah. So we AB the hardware and the software, and actually, I'll tell you something. We're talking about a song, Delirious, which came out on Stereo Hype um, last year, <laughs> and the vocal for that is actually a comp um, between takes which were um, recorded with hardware and comps and takes which were recorded with the UAD software. <laughs> what? It's, the difference is inaudible. You cannot hear it. Huge, huge, huge. There is no difference. There is no difference. That is insane. It is insanely good. So yeah, our chain for recording vocals, guys. If you want to know, uh, we use um, Telefunken mics, Telefunken uh, tube mic, um, and then we go into the Apollo and we use a Unison 1073 uh, Neve, and then we're using a bit of light compression. Um, from the CL1B, the TubeTech CL1B. So that's our our vocal chain right there. Um, and then when it comes to plugins, instrument plugins, um, obviously Serum is a go-to. Yeah, uh, I think for everyone because it's just so it's versatile. It's versatile, and you can create your own sound in there. Do you know what I mean you can? It's it's great to have the wavetable, and you can just it's so versatile, adjustable. Who does Serum? Who's it by? Exfer, Exfer Records. Exfer, okay, Exfer yeah. Records. Yeah. Um, so Serum's really good. Um, the Arturia bundle is very, very, very good. The V collection. Because um, I, I do love a bit of analog synth action. Um, and as you can probably hear all over our records. Um, so, and that's actually, most of that is from the Arturia um V collection. It's not actual analog synths. It's um, it's the Arturia stuff, and it sounds so good. It sounds so so good. Um, so we use that a lot, and then there's stuff like um, 
Omnisphere we use a bit of. Mm, very um, powerful. Yeah, it's uh, very thirsty. Uh, very thirsty. <laughs> very thirsty. But it's, no, it's really good. And Keyscape is really good. The piano's Keyscape is really good. Spectratronics. Yeah, yeah. Spe uh, Spectratronics is really good. Um, and then we've got a lot of the Native Instruments stuff complete. Um, we still use, actually, um, Absinthe quite a lot. Oh, wow. I know. It's retro, isn't it? Wow. We use Absinthe quite a yeah. lot. And Massive. Um, yeah, Massive is used quite a lot we use we use that quite a lot um and then zebra um which is a good um it's for sister uh synth to diva do you know diva yeah, it's, yeah is yeah. it the free one no no, 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 no it's definitely so. not free <laughs> yeah diva's good yuhi stuff's really yeah it's, good. it's you it's you yeah it's for sister to, to diva we have diva but we use zebra more Zebra. okay um probably because people use it less right we use it more yeah, I like um, that attitude. So yeah, no, it's it's great. So that that's really good as well. Um, have I have I missed anything? And then Loop Cloud, we use a lot of. This is really good for the. You guys should get your fans to listen to this one because you reveal a lot. Yeah. And they'll be really grateful. I the think producers. Ma I think Matt's going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> you always said, "Don't give away your secrets." Well, they're not secrets. You're just showing the tool toys yeah, that you sure. use. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, exactly. people wondering how we're managing to create yeah. records on literally on the road, and the process Ben just described. It's literally step by step tutorial how to not uh, have to have um, you know. Masses, All loads of uh, hardware. Masses of hardware, exactly. Yeah, and especially when you're traveling somewhere like Indonesia, where situation yeah. with yeah. import tax is uh, extremely difficult, mm. and then you just have to come with your laptop, headphones, and uh, everything and you, need you to have. Be able to get an, if yeah. you guys have an idea, In software. you want to be able to get it up quick, yeah, just to at least you know yeah. sketch. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. So, and then we use a lot of people ask what door we use, and we use Logic, right? Um, because that's what intelligent people use, right? <laughs> <laughs> It sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's just, user friendly. The workflow is just so much. Tracking better. vocals, it's yeah. Better. Tracking vocals. Have you ever tried to track vocals in Ableton? Yeah, that's. A, yeah. I only do it in Ableton. I don't. I didn't know you guys could do it the way you did it. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, yeah. No, logic is for tracking vocals is brilliant. Yeah, I think Ableton finally addressed that. It only took them about twenty you know, twenty ten, versions. Twenty or versions. Eleven, yeah. thirteen. <laughs> No, Let's, Logic just works really well for us. I want to talk a little bit about, you guys are really clued in, so it's really refreshing having, speaking to, you know, the real deal. You guys are musicians, writers, DJs. Um, you understand the business. You respect the business. You play the game and you do it the right way. So there's a lot of integrity there. Shout out to that. Thanks, man. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, I guess, I want to understand a little bit about what does that work translate into uh, in terms of, you know, we've got to pay the bills. So there's Spotify. So there's like the stream side and then there's the download side, right? And you've got the DJs playing the records. Um, you're getting into the club charts for the UK and then you have the streaming. One of our goals at Crate, and we'll expand on this after you guys sort of get back to me on that one. One of the goals at Crate, what, one of our, re, our why, why are we doing this is our goal is to help artists like yourself make a full-time living off making music well, we do we do make a full time living off making music. So we're going to help you make more. But, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but we're not making a full time living from Echo Storms. Right, right. Um, okay, lot, so that's what I wanted to get at directly lot, from Echo Storms. A lot of a lot of um, you know the the funds that we, that we have coming in are from records which I've written in the past mm -hmm. from pop records. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a catalog. The catalog, yeah. and we also do lots of work for. Oh, we do a lot of produ clients. production work. Um, Writing and production, uh, mixing, mastering. Um, I've got a record which I, I produced and mixed and mastered. I didn't write any of it. It just came to me in a, a sort of like a bit of a unfinished state. And they said, can you just finish this off? And so I just did add prod, um, mix and master. And it's just gone top 40 in the UK club charts. So, Amazing. so that's really nice. That's really nice. Um, so it's, yeah, yeah, we do a lot of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um and sometimes it's, you know, for... What would it mean for you if you could make a full-time... So you've got that stuff. That's work that... Hard work that you've put in from the past and that yeah. you're still getting a trailing, you know, royalty from that. What would it mean for you guys personally if Echo Storms could be the sole provider for, you know, monetizing what you're doing? Plus, obviously, you've got the label, right? Yeah. So how, what would that mean for you guys personally if you could make draw like a, you know... a I, I guess when I say make a living, let's 
you know, the stat that we're looking at is like 65,000 USD per annum in music sales because we know what Spotify pl- pays. Yeah. It's not a lot. No. Right? So No, no. Sp- Spotify, you're not going to make your money off Spotify. Which is the main, the main medium that music is consumed. Yeah, but the main way that... Uh, and you guys are doing really well the on ma- Spotify. The main, the, ma- yeah, the main way that an artist makes money is from shows. Mm. Not from the sales, but from not, the gigging. Yeah, from the shows. Shows and merch. Mm. Shows and merch and sync. Shows, merch and sync. Sync's a bit of the holy grail, isn't it? Yeah. Especially if you can start getting into the gaming space. Oh, God. Yeah, and the topic of merch, I would... Uh, oh, yes, <laughs> yes. I, I led you nicely onto that one. Oh, yeah, I would really like to announce that uh, on our own label, we also do do merch and we... We are... Well, it's not just merch, is it? We are, yeah. we are launching our own we, fashion we label. Yeah. Wow. Wicked. Wicked. Can we do a little plug on the domain? Is it ready? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to give it a little plug now? Uh, yeah, it's galacticaentertainmentgroup.com. Dot com. Galactica Entertainment Group. Dot com. That's right. I saw you. And then on that. Uh, and then on. Uh, it's really long. It is incredibly long. Um, but check us out on Instagram, Galactica Rex. Um, and then there's links from Echo Storms, which is literally just at Echo Storms. Yeah, we'll plug you on this as well. So links. Um, you can check out all the, all the, um, all the fashion stuff on there as well. With having a photo shoot uh, next week um, so everything's going to be up online what kind of merch can we expect well, is this is actually what we're wearing at the moment it's yeah, our like own it's our own logo it's mm-hmm. our own t-shirts and uh, St- stand up and, and show Kaiser. it's a big it's a oh yeah I have to fit in I, so I love these extended tees oh, I love yeah, this is all on the behind you can see it's all oh, that's our, cool it's all our own artwork from the singles yeah it's what all one's that from forward forward okay that's a Denzel, the Denzel Washington one okay and uh, well, I'm, I'm, gonna... I'm wearing emotions, but I'm not going to stand up because mm-hmm. uh, my foot's gone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're we're going to do we're going to be doing uh, t-shirts, uh, shorts, uh, jewelry, caps. Uh, baseball caps, and uh, shoppers, uh, and bags. Um, that's going to be for the spring summer collection, and then for the uh, autumn winter collection, we're going to be adding in uh, like longer pants. Yep, yep. As in, like long pants, mm-hmm. um, not not three quarter length, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Long, full length Thanks pants. For clearing yeah, that yeah, up. exactly. Bit of clarity on that one. Uh, hoodies, mm-hmm. um, and we're looking at doing some jackets as well. So oh, it's I want to get some of those shirts, guys. So I'll hit you up. Yeah, you can do, man. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'm going to sort of explain to you what we're about. We're on the precipice of a really, really exciting time. Um, you, you've been writing records for a long time, and you've come from the pop world, so you understand the power of catalog. You understand the power of points and writing on a track it's a very tough industry um 100 the ims report came out and said uh, basically there's only about 1116 or 60 do we have uh, you know make a full-time living off their catalog which is 65 sorry 65k per annum us out of the for electronic music producers yeah. very very small and i'm truly concerned about the ways in which we can monetize our work, not through gigging because if it was only like I've been a full-time producer and DJ for a decade, but I've never made enough from the uh, production side, from the production side, even having top fifties, even a number two, you know, and lots of top fifties in the Australian club charts. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, sinking can sort of pay you for a year. If you get a decent sinking deal at about 50 K and you got most of the points on the track. Um, our goal at Crate, because of blockchain and NFT technology, is for the first time, you guys are going to be able to start making serious money from your music because your curators will be either curators or DJs. Yeah. So now, because of the concept of an NFT, you're able to make your releases scarce. So for the, we're going to be able to sync up vinyl. So ex- exactly what's happening in vinyl culture is now going to happen digitally. So the NFT becomes the certificate of authenticity. When I buy one of your tracks, let's say you, uh, this is the great thing with NFTs, you can say we're going to make 100 copies. So there's 100 NFTs of that track. So well, it's just, it's, it becomes like a limited edition. It becomes a limit. You now have scarcity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've never had scarcity before. No. The only way scarcity is achieved. In fact, it's been going completely the opposite, the opposite. way. It's been going the opposite way for a long time. Yeah. A long time. Yeah, and there's psychological reasons too. When someone owns something, uh, they value it more. Hundred percent. And if someone owns something that other people don't own, or it's harder for them to get, it's more value, more valuable to them. 
And we're starting to, we're going to start seeing an explosion in the culture that we used to have when you'd buy the record or buy the CD, read the booklet, get the flyer, get the poster, get some of the merch and have a bit more of a connection to the artist. A hundred percent. Rather than just con- consuming stuff on playlists. That's right. And you don't, you're not really that loyal in that context, but when, you're, when your room's decked out in posters with your favourite band. And that doesn't happen anymore. Doesn't happen. And the kids don't get It needs that to chance. go back, you know, at least a bit towards that way because the way it's gone now, music has just consumed, disposed, consumed, disposed, and it's become just... How many amazing records? Uh, imagine, like, for you guys, right, when you start, when you're, you look at your back catalogue, when you're releasing a track, that's when it gets released. But what happens if it takes one of those tracks? And maybe the better way to ask you the question is, have you had a track that came out earlier but then started for whatever reason getting traction later? Do you have many of those tracks? We've had we've we have, we've had, we've had a couple of those, I guess. Yeah. Like Emotions has just been it started really slow and I was like, "Oh my god, it's tanked." Um but it actually it just it built up it got went top 10 in the UK club charts but that built up took time and it, and it's taken time but it's still it's streaming it's our i think it's our second most streamed track as in on a daily basis right. when you look at the spotify for artists mm-hmm. it's our second most streamed track after move on right. uh, on a daily basis and it's it's growing like emotions is growing so, so imagine if you did a uh, limited edition emotions that was only 100 copies with some free merch that included with the people that bought that NFT. Yeah. You could do that. You could even add a, a, a an extra track in there yeah. or a, a, a unique mix that's not available. Like a VIP or like something. Like a VIP because yeah. you've already released it, but you could go back to your catalog and start reissuing NFTs. Yeah. And it incentivizes DJs because Crate's all about connecting artists and DJs and DJs want music that other DJs don't have 100%. and they want to be rewarded for digging for music. Yeah. They don't want to dig for a track three hours and then uh, someone shazams it or, you know, finds, sees them playing it, finds it and buys it for $2 on Beatport. Exactly. And that's where the, that's where the revolution's going to come in where it's really... Well, that's how it always was, wasn't it? Like, yeah. when house music started off, like in Chicago and everything, like... It was all shared. It was... And people went to see the DJs because, because had they had those records 100%. and they couldn't get them on Beatport. They couldn't get them anywhere else. If they wanted, if they wanted to hear those records, they had to go and see Frankie Knuckles or whoever. Do you know what I mean? They had to go and see that specific DJ. And that was what was one of the things that was keeping people coming back to those shows because they couldn't get those music, that music, you know, those, those tracks, that music on Spotify, Beatport. It wasn't as available. Mm. And I think that is something which there's a lot to be said for stuff that isn't available. There really is. There's, it, it really increases you know, desirability when something isn't available. People want it. So that's where it's going. So when now we're building our community. We're in community building mode for Crate and we're looking for our founding artists and all the artists need to do is contribute a track uh, that's unreleased because it'll be exclusive for Crate. That's how we kind of protect the artists. Um, but we can expand a lot more on that uh, at our webinar where it's more about – because this podcast is more about you guys. But I yeah. just wanted to drop the concept because you completely get it straight away. Yeah, it's a brilliant concept. And it's going to be really exciting for you guys because that is what's on the horizon. You guys already have very good systems and have a really good understanding of the industry and you're writing good music with feeling. You know, So there's a real authenticity in your art – and that's going to connect to people. So it's really, really exciting to see what's uh, what's what's on the horizon for you guys. We would love to have you involved in Crate as well. Yeah, we'd love to be involved, and, man. Uh, we'd love to be involved. So it sounds so exciting. I know. I know. Yeah. What we look for. And then down the track when we launch the f- feature for labels it's going to be really exciting for you guys as well because we'll be able to incorporate labels. Then we'll be incorporating stems. So you can go back to your top lines. And when, so the way stems are going to work with Crate is when you upload a stem, whoever buys it is getting the full rights to use it and exploit it in their own track. Okay. So you would charge a little bit more for that. But every time that stem is bought and sold, you get a trailing commission. I forgot to mention that. 
every time your song is purchased. So let's say you've got 100 copies, they all sell out. For me now to get one of your copies, I've got to buy it off one of the DJs or whoever is holding one of those copies. Yeah. So So you've done your job, you know, if you sell out in the 100. And how many you press, sorry, press, but how many you mint is going to be sort of up to you and up to us in terms of what's that balance going to look like. And it will change as your followers grow. You know, if you've got... Uh, 100%, if you've gone from 1,000 to 10,000 followers, you're probably at an extra zero to how many tracks you're going to release. Yeah. You're going to be able to grow with your audience and con- and contain your supply and demand. Every time someone buys that NFT, uh, well, the track, right? Every time someone buys your track off another DJ, you're getting commission and that royalty is what you've initially put into the, when you've created the NFT. That cannot be changed and it just happens straight away. So there's no, there's no, uh, invoicing or anything like that the money just gets split up straight away that's extremely interesting that's really interesting yeah i think you will do you know tons of good to the world to the musician yeah Hopefully i think to the artists you're, and the djs you're definitely onto yeah. something yeah you're definitely onto something because there are so many people just like heartbroken because uh they love what they do and they're so good at what they do but they have to be bogged down uh into business side of things otherwise you can just kind of make a living from what you love doing and from what you're good at. So, yeah, that's uh, that was very difficult for us at the start. Mm. And that's why we had to create the whole galactical world and everything. So, Which was a really good move, guys. Yeah, you really sure. did. Yeah, we did, well, and we're so happy we did that. Like, there's no, not a second of regret. Let's just unpack that, right? When you said so happy, you know, one of the key things, this is a labor of love. We all know it. we're songwriters, we're producers, we're DJs. Being happy. Can you give me some ideas to what, how you get to be happy and I think one of them we can say is being in control creative control of Echo Storms I get to be happy when I wake up and she's next to me amazing that is that is the definition of happiness I wake up and the first thing I see is her and I think God, things aren't so bad are they <laughs> yeah I mean wow yeah. even during the tough times it's beautiful yeah we know that we always got each other we always, we've always got each other yeah but uh, from the point of you know, being a label owner, what makes us happy? Or an artist. Actually, or an, an artist. artist. What's well, happiness both be? Is Obviously, when our tracks do well. Yeah. You know, it's when, it's, you know, things like, from a, uh, like a small thing, like somebody posting, you know, them listening to our, car, our, our song and one of our tracks in their car and saying that we're their biggest inspiration and like we're the reason why they make music and... Stuff like that. Seeing DJs play our tracks around the world, you know, sending sending us videos, not us asking for videos, just sending us videos of you know our music, you know, connecting with their audience and making their moment. Yeah, I think it's very important on emotional uh, side of things, and it does bring you satisfaction. But I, I think what is even more important is what you guys do. You actually will be able to provide DJs, producers a living because that's something you know we 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 need to have. So, it's just, so this is essential part of the operation because DJs yeah. <laughs> DJs lost all their work during the pandemic. Oh, yes, sure. we know that. And <laughs> you guys, you guys experienced that firsthand. Yeah, and our goal is it's very simple for us, right? Let the music do the talking, hustle less, create more. Yeah. Because by definition, if you're creating more, in theory, you have higher productive output, which means you will develop more as an artist because you have more opportunity to. And if you have kids or other financial responsibilities, bills to pay, for yeah. example, 100%. it's very hard to justify time that cannot be measured against something. Mm-hmm. You do a gig, sure. you can get a gauge on, on how to pay the next bills. But if you're spending four hours looking for a kick drum or playing with your next plug-in, learning a new, <laughs> learning a new instrument. Uh, it's very hard to justify. And imagine the DJ that is actually a really good digger and his wife's like, what are you doing for the last three hours? You could have been out there working and providing for this family and helping me, helping support me. Uh, and now, so this is the other thing, right? Those, those first 100 people that bought your track, you would probably, you get to set your own price, right? This is direct artist storefront. You get to set the price of your track and what you'll probably do is set a really low price, $1, $2, right? Yeah. Sells out really quickly. Then for someone else to get it, they have to go through the DJs. So for a DJ, for it to be worthwhile for him to sell it because he spent the time, he's following you on the socials, yeah. he's sending you the videos, he's a true fan and he's a professional fan because he's DJing, Yeah. right? So these are really, this starts, you guys start getting a really transparent and um, 
uh, genuine relationship. You got right, who's playing our music? Well, these guys are that are playing it, and you can see where in the world they are. Yeah, you know, and that opens up a whole other doors for building future relationships with, which you guys will absolutely excel in because that's all you're looking for. Those people that love what you do, hundred percent, yeah, right. And so that DJ gets an early, buys a track for a dollar, and he holds on to it. All of a sudden, there's so much demand from DJs because it's just hit number four in the UK charts that a whole lot of other DJs want to buy it. And now the price is going at about $20 and this DJ that bought it for a dollar sells it for 19 mm-hmm. you know, sells it for $20 and can can make some money. Yeah, That's like... A question. Was like, a, like, basically like having shares, right? Basically, mm-hmm. kind of, but it's on the mechanical. Yeah, yeah. We're not touching the, the publishing yet. Um, so right, so... so when this N- NFT gets sold, mm-hmm. we retain the publishing. Yeah, you um, retain the publishing. Oh, do we? So you get the reoccur every time this NFT is sold. Like, let's say he buys it off you. He buys one of your tracks, and you only be have, nice. You only have one copy, <laughs> right? So you've got what? We'll do it on a, an example of just one. You've got one copy of Emotions. Richard buys it. Yeah. I really want to get the track. I'm late. You posted it, and I'm like, damn, Richard's fast. He beat me to it by minutes, and I see Richard's got the track, and Richard already. I can see how much he bought it for and I'm going, hey man, can I get the track? Or Richard's put a buy it now price straight away just in case he doesn't miss on a sale and he's done it at $3. And I've, yep, no problem. I've got one Echo Storm track that no one else has. I'll buy it. A question, where do you, how do you let people preview the track? Would it still be released on any platform privately? No, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be um, exclusive. You can, you can only listen to it after you bought it. Or no, how? you'd have a preview, right? You can have a preview, just the same as we Beatport. normally do. It. It's going to be like a 45 second, 30, 30 second preview. Also, you'll be able to uh, pay a little bit more down the track and we'll get you onto streaming services like Spotify and stuff. But for, okay. in terms of download, we would be the exclusive place because okay. you wouldn't because DJs want to be part of Crate because that music is only from Crate so picture if we're like a vinyl store that has a deep catalog and any stuff that from that store you can't get it anywhere else yeah so yeah, basically yeah. music still will be released on platforms where people can listen to music Stream. but cannot download download yeah, because DJs mm-hmm. DJs we've got two different important user bases here we've got people that listen to your music that aren't djs that love it and send yep. you the pictures and playing in the car and whatnot yep. then we've got the djs yeah two areas that you guys have really figured out how you um you market to them already yeah you know which is amazing and so for us where i'm a dj right and a producer and i'm trying to create something that is really going to help those two those two people really connect and work together because what's going to happen we're going to start rebuilding that culture like you used to have the relationship with the guy at the vinyl store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would hold that, one of those test presses for you that everyone's driving around town. And now that relationship is between the DJ and the producer. So what's going to happen for you guys is your true fans, as as in DJs, that are playing your records, they're usually going to be the first to buy your next track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And they're going to be rewarded for that because they're going to get it at the cheaper price. Yeah, so essentially you wouldn't let promo companies send your record to DJs for free for them to play it. it doesn't... You would make it more exclusive. So if they do want to play it, they would have to, you know, really find it, fight for it if they have to. Promo companies is an interesting one because it's a two-edged sword because most of the people that you actually want to buy the track uh, who, who, who who would buy it don't buy it. Right. Yeah. And then basically the people that are buying it are the bedroom DJs, right? Yeah. That aren't the club residents. That's the whole idea of promo. But in this, yeah. you'll be able to send some of the copies of your tracks for free. So let's say you press 100, you mint 100 yeah. copies of Emotions and you've got 10 big artists or radio station curators at BBC yeah. One or whatever yeah. and you can just send, oh, what's your wallet address? I'll send that to you. So they've got it for free and then you go, right, I'm going to put 90 on the market for sale. You might even keep a few for yourself, 10, 10 tracks, the first 10. Yeah. And as the price gets up, you might release. And if you if you release it and it stops moving, let's say the, the average price gets up to about $25 and no one really wants to sp- spend more than 25 but no one actually wants to sell your track either. So it stagnates, right? So it's not growing. Then what you do is you do a second release. And that would quickly, in theory get to that $25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people would be jumping on it. They're not quite ready to pay 25 but they'll quickly jump on it if it's four dollars right and tracks will start having this kind of um market value floor price 
which yeah. is really interesting. Yeah, that's extremely well. yeah, interesting. It's super interesting. Because the community of DJs is such a big world and there are so many people out there. It's big, but it's tight-knit. It's tight-knit. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, we need to give power back to these guys because 100%. these guys... 100%. I, I, you know, I, I'm, these guys really had a h hard time in the pandemic and what breaks my heart is the fact that these people, you know, were waking up and not knowing what they're going to do and how they're going to get through things. Yeah. And that's a really sad thing because we... we we play for people and we bring them joy. Yeah. Right? And when this gets dried up and these people can no longer entertain and don't have any don't aren't particularly interested even in producing. No. But because the industry pushed you down that path, a lot of the we, we lost a lot of the the curators that are just waiting to be reawakened. And the yeah, other thing yeah. that Crate does, all those producers that did the touring that now have the families or have had to move on but still have the studio but don't have the time to do the gigs can now get back into the game. Yeah, 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 100%. Because they can write they love writing dance records. Yeah, yeah. But they don't need to be active in the scene because yeah. the digger is going to find them because good music rises to the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that's extremely interesting. Yeah, it's think, really interesting. Yeah, I think you guys going to make people the most happy. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I think I think you guys going to make people really happy. I hope we make you guys happy, yeah. you know. So, we're going to we're going to we'll talk after the show about yeah, the details and uh let's yes. let's get some Let's get some Echo Song tracks going. Yes. Know. Sounds really good. Exciting. Sounds really good. We got any more, quick, Richard? We've probably got time for a couple more questions in your question book. Yeah, one of the things that we always want to find out is, um, you know, the growth and the journey from where you are now. What would be the key takeaways if you think about your younger self? Would your younger self be impressed with where you are? How you've made it to this point? I, th I think so, yeah, to be fair. I think. How young? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think six-year-old me would look at me now and think, "Wow." <laughs> yeah, life is full of full of ups and downs. Yeah, and it is, isn't it? We, you know, involved not only in the music industry in our lives. There are also other aspects. For example, if I look at myself from one aspect, I would I would say, yeah, I would definitely be proud of myself. And from another point of view, I'd say, two years ago, I was in a better place. You know, was in different field of my life. What, what's somewhere that you guys aren't so proud that you're working towards? Well, you always have some dreams and goals with you, which you steam towards. And they're not necessary uh, material goals and they're not necessary in the music industry. So we are all human beings and our all goals are not, you know, in, in the circle of music industry. So we, you know, everyone has their own... Do you have a human being goal <laughs> that you're working on? Um, multiple, actually, yeah. What's one you want to share that's that's bringing you something because this stuff is we, this is the stuff that we don't talk about enough in our industries what do we do personally that helps us with our art are we meditating are we vegan are we carniv carnivorous are we keto are we met you know are we practicing some sort of spiritual exercise that's helping with our with ourselves is there anything that you're working on as a human that's you're finding that's that you've always wanted to for your higher self that you that you can share that's helping. That's a very interesting, complicated question. It is. A, a, I, I think. I think time. you probably need longer probably than ten minutes. A whole podcast. <laughs> yeah, for you that probably one. need a whole podcast. Yeah, for that you're one. basically trying to uh, asking me to lay, lay down my life goals, but I think the most important thing in life is enjoy. It. If life is not an enjoyment, you should definitely change something because if you don't, you know, enjoy what you do, or if you're not satisfied until the point when you you, you know, uh, kind of not excited about life anymore. It just brings you down. I think the most important thing in life is just be happy and enjoy what you do. And just have fun with it, right? Yeah, just have fun. Just have a good time. I think that's we're, live, we're, we're always laughing. Yeah, live without regrets and take all the opportunities which are on your way. Yeah. Otherwise, you just will regret it in the end. That is an extremely beautiful answer. And we is. have to end on that. What a closer. Thank 100%. you so much. Ben and Katya for being on the show. Echo Storms. It was Thank a pleasure. You so Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.